Today, we are going to talk about function operations with rational exponents and radicals. Function operations such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So we're going to do all four functions by adding them together, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So what this means is that when I have two functions, I can add them together. I can subtract the two functions. I can multiply the two functions, or I can divide the two functions. Now, we are going to talk about these domain um, of the composition. So, the domain of any of these consists of the x values that are in both f and g. So, again, whatever domain is in f and g will be the domain of the operation. Okay? We do have to be careful with the division, because remember, your denominator cannot equal zero. So you'll always have an exception, just like this one cannot be negative two. You'll see that more in example when we get into the division. So let's start with looking at domain of common functions. So if we are dealing with an even index, such as the square root or the fourth root, etc., my domain is gonna be zero to infinity. My domain is zero to infinity. I can write this as x is greater than or equal to zero, or I can write it in interval notation zero to infinity. Now, what if I have an odd index? An odd index such as the cube root of x or the fifth root of x. Notice my domain is gonna be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. So if I have a mixture of a square root and a cube root, the only domain that's in both of them is going to be the zero to infinity, okay? I can't do all real numbers if they both don't have all real numbers. So let's look at some of these examples. So we're going to start off by adding two functions together. So we have f of x and we have g of x, and then we're going to evaluate. Let's start with the adding. So when we add them together, we have negative 2 with the cube root of x plus 16 to the cube root of x. And because they both have the cube root of x, negative 2 plus 16 is 14 cube root of x. So this is when you add them together. Now to substitute an 8 in there, we would put the cube root of 8. This is to evaluate. And the cube root of 8 is a 2. So 14 times 2 the answer is 28. What's my domain? So they are two cube roots, and cube roots both have a domain of all real numbers. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. And if my domain on both of them is all real numbers, then when I add, subtract, multiply, all of them are going to be all real numbers, okay? So let's try subtracting them. I'm going to have negative 2 cube root of x because the f is in front. And this time I am subtracting 16 cube roots of x. So negative 2 minus 16 is negative 18. So this is when we subtracted them. Now when we plug in an 8, I have negative 18 times the cube root of 8 cube root of 8 is going to be a positive 2. Multiply them and your answer is negative 36. Okay, So this is when we added them and this is when we subtracted them. So for this one, since this problem is a tiny bit harder, I'm going to go ahead and start the addition one for you. So we are going to add f plus g. So I'm going to start off by saying 5 fourth roots of x plus 1 because that's f, and I'm going to add a negative 3 fourth root of x plus 4. Combine like terms, I'm going to have 2 with the fourth root, and then 1 plus 4 gives me a plus 5. So I want you to go ahead and plug in that 81 and tell me what you get for it. Now I'm gonna give you a big hint here. Because it's a fourth root, you should have two solutions to this problem. Okay, so check that one. So 
when I took the fourth root of 81, remember if I ever take the even root, if my index is even of a positive number, I'm gonna have two solutions. So I had two times positive three, and I had two times negative three, both plus five. Now with the fourth roots, the fourth roots are like square roots. My domain is not all real numbers this time. My domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. Remember, and you can write it like this, or you can write it like this, two different ways to write it. Remember, they have to be in both of them. And again, anytime you have a square root um, of or fourth root, the domain's gonna be from zero to infinity. So go ahead and pause this video and give the subtraction one a try. Now I'm gonna let you know this, when you're subtracting g of x, make sure to distribute your negative number. Go ahead and pause the video here. I went ahead and distributed my negative. Now I'm gonna pause the video and I want you to combine like terms. Okay, check how you did. And now we're gonna plug in the 81 again and don't forget you're gonna have those two solutions again. Pause the video here and try evaluating for 81. Okay, see how you did on that. The fourth root of 81, remember, is going to be negative three and positive three. Now I just looked and I realized I forgot that one there. So remember the fourth root of 81 is three and negative three. So when I plugged them in, I had 24 minus three and I had negative 24 minus three. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little bit harder. We are going to multiply them and we're gonna divide them, okay? So I want you to pay attention here. Now, when you multiply them, the good thing is whatever's in one domain's in the other, but I want you to look at what these roots are gonna be. This is a square root. This is a cube root. The domain of a square root is zero to infinity, and the domain of a cube root is negative infinity to infinity. Now, remember, when we do composition, it has to be part of both of them. I can't use a negative 10 if a negative 10 is not in both of them. So my domain right now is gonna be limited to zero to infinity. So my domain when I multiply is still zero to infinity. Now, that is correct also for division, but we've gotta be careful that when I set this up, my denominator cannot equal zero. So we'll talk about that when we get there. So there is a domain restriction on those division because of some holes I can have when I div divide, okay? So first let's multiply. We have seven x to the three halves, and we have negative 14 x to the one third. Ooh, a little tricky here. Multiply your numbers and you get negative 98. Now how do we add three halves plus one third? Well, you need to have a common denominator. So if I were to convert these both to a common denominator, I would make them into sixes. So I would have nine over six, and I would have two over six. So all I did was multiply this by three, and then I multiplied this by two, and I have now 11 over six. So this is when I multiply them. Now when I plug in a 64, negative 98 times 64 to the 11 over six, and yes, we do want you to use the calculator at this stage. So when you plug it into the calculator, you get, it's a pretty big number, negative 200,704. And yes, you will see some big numbers. It's hard to make a lot of these small. Okay, let's try that division now. Again, division's gonna be a little tiny bit trickier. So luckily, we already converted them to having the same denominator. So when I do set them up first, I am gonna put the F on top and I'm going to put the G on the bottom. Now, when I subtract them, I also need to have a common denominator on my exponents. So seven X to the nine over six over negative 14 X to the two six, okay? So now when I divide them, I'm gonna get negative one half and x is when I subtract them, it's gonna be seven over six on the top. So here is when I divided them. Now, when I plug in a 64, this is what it looks like, and then I am gonna say at this point you need to use a calculator. So go ahead and plug it into your calculator, make sure you have a seven over six as your exponent. Okay, 
and you get negative 64. Now this domain's a little bit tricky. I know we've been saying, okay, it has to be in both, just like we did for the multiplication, but here's my dilemma. When I divide, my denominator cannot equal zero. So the issue is if x is zero, then I have an undefined point. So x cannot be zero. So I'm gonna use this one, but it can't be zero. So I can use parentheses and say zero to infinity, or I can say x is greater than zero. But because I cannot divide by zero, it cannot be equal to zero. Okay, now given all of that information, I want you to go ahead and try doing the whole multiplication side on your own. Go ahead and pause this video here and try the multiplication side. Okay, check your multiplication side. Now be very careful when you add four plus one third the most common mistake here is that people will say four plus one third is four thirds. Remember that we have to add these together when we're multiplying them, okay? Again, we have to add them. So when I added them together, they needed a common denominator. So 12 thirds plus one thirds was 13 thirds. And when I plugged in the five, I got 102,599. Now that domain had to be part of both of them. So with the multiplication, you don't have to worry about the restrictions, but I can only look at zero to infinity. Remember, it has to be part of both of them when I combine them, okay? Now try the division and go ahead and just do the division first before we plug it in to make sure we have this section first. So try just setting it up first. Okay, check if you got that right, okay? Four over 24 is one over six. And with the exponents, I needed that common denominator, and then I subtracted them, okay? Now go ahead and take this one, and I want you to plug in a 5. Check how you did. Now our last question of this video, okay? I want you to look at that domain. It has to be part of both of them. But remember, your denominator cannot equal 0. So pause it, try it, okay? This answer is going to be 0 to infinity with parentheses because it cannot be 0, okay? The reason it cannot be 0 is because if I plug in a 0 right here, 0 to the 1 third is 0, 0 times 24 is 0, and I cannot divide by 0. Hopefully... This video helps you just a little bit of seeing how um, the composition of functions works. Have a great day.